Hi, I'm William. I've just passed the CFA EHJSM, so I'd like to start a series with my YouTube channel to help candidates to focus on important parts of the course material. As a founder, it looks like only about 5% is relevant in passing the exam, so let's begin. Right, so let's begin on the learning outcomes. Well, there are seven learning outcomes for this chapter. Well, and I'll go through well, the learning outcomes and kind of one by one in the subsequent slides. So we are not going to spend too much time on this slide. So the first learning outcome, or actually the first two, um, well, the first would be to define, pretty much define ESG invest in different approaches and then uh, define certain sustainability based concepts. And in particular, there's one aspect that is highlighted in the learning outcome, that's a so called triple bottom line account, and we'll talk about that a bit later. So, yes, she well, this is an introductory section, and yes, she of course, that means environmental, social, and governance. And of course, well, you need to remember very clearly what yes, she is. And um, there's an emphasis uh, stated at the beginning of this chapter that yes, she consistent with long termism. And of course, you need to uh, when asked what kind of issues are considered ye uh, that is the issues pertaining to the natural world and uh, which issues are considered under S uh, that is those pertaining to human life and then uh, what issues uh, are considered G that is the issues uh, that are related to country, country industry or, or stakeholders and then ESG investing uh, is considered a kind of responsible investment uh, i.e. Um, ESG investing is the consideration of how ESG issues will affect long-term returns but then well um, ESG investing well according to well, this session means uh, uh, investing uh, those are focus on, on creating returns but then there are other so-called response investment approaches they may take into account on financial aspects. And well, if you look at the learning outcome, then there are a number of things that you need to remember also. Um, well, the first is I'll say a bit uh, unclear. Socially responsible investment, but then we look at the definition, it looks like it's, it's more or less the same as responsible investment. And then uh, you need to remember what is considered uh, best in class investment. So very much uh, uh, similar to positive screening, that is where you uh, define a certain set of criteria and then um, when you uh, uh, look at you know, investment, then you um, see whether uh, the characteristics of those investment will be uh, will overcome a certain defined ranking hurdle this is, uh, but then well, they are not always res responsible investment, so uh, take an example um, investment may be uh, in a fossil fuel company it may define certain uh, hurdle that is well uh, you uh, reach uh, net zero by say 2050 say if this uh, fossil fuel company has defined goals to reach net zero then it may still be uh, considered under the best in, in class investor approach but then uh, this kind of investment may not always be considered responsible investment and sustainable investment that may include a uh, best in class and ESG integration and thematic investment that means investing in ESG related themes or assets and of course green investment the next slide um, the concept is cultural investment which um, the exam questions often ask a related ease question about what yeah, the so-called bottom of the pyramid. So you, you uh, remember what's meant by bottom of the pyramid. That is the poorest two thirds of the economic human pyramid. And impact investment. That's one that generates positive, measurable social environmental impact alongside financial return. But then this not philanthropy. Philanthropy is pretty much a uh, charity. But then impact investment is not really about charity. It may be a bit similar to charity, but then it's not. And also ethical and faith-based investment, for example, well, in, in say Muslim countries, um, a fund will not invest in say uh, gambling, 
or interest bear, you know, interest receiving companies or, or companies uh, or say companies that, that uh, produce pork. Shareholder invite engagement is to influence the company's decisions by decisions by shareholders. And then corporate social responsibility, that is the creation of long-term stakeholder value by focusing on ESG issues. And under this, um, the chapter introduces the concept of triple lot, bottom line accounting. That is well, uh, people, planet, and profit. Right now, come the third one. So uh, to describe the benefit in China in incorporating ESG in decision making, and linkages between responsible investment and financial systems stability. Um, well, it seems that well, the not smart, uh, not organized well, well that well. So um, although it says that well, uh, under this third learning outcome, it talks about the, uh, describing the benefit and challenges. But then this ch uh, section actually uh, it begins in talking about uh, the perspectives on ESG integration. But then I'll just follow uh, the the flow. So uh, the first will be uh, risk. And one of the things is that, well, there are lots of ESG risks, but in practice, you need to consider the material, materiality of each. Fiduciary duty, well, uh, you need to pay uh, a lot of attention because uh, for a lot of managers, they fear that by taking into account ESG issues, that might be uh, uh, contradictory to their fiduciary duty to uh, uh, maximize risk adjusted return. And to address this, uh, the United Nations has got a UN Environmental Environment Program Finance Initiative, that's UNEPFI, uh, which uh, commissioned law firm Freshfield and common this report called a legal framework for the integration of environmental, social and governance issues into institutional investment, uh, which pretty much mitigates that integrating ESG considerations in the investment analysis is permissible and is arguably required in all jurisdictions. So this pretty much uh, uh, clear the hurdle of oh, well, align for uh, ESG issues while uh, also uh, satisfying the, the need uh, to fulfill the fiduciary duty. Right, the other perspective in ESG integration, they will uh, include economic uh, impact ethics, client demand regulatory. So the last two uh, will be elaborated in, in chapter two. In this economic uh, perspective, well, firstly, they will include uh, uh, the considered negative mega trends that may, like the scarcity of basic inputs that will create a drag on economic prosperity. And under this, um, the exams questions will often ask about the so called Stockholm Resilience Center, which talks about the nine planetary boundaries. And four of them have been crossed, like the climate change, and lots of biosphere integrity, land system change, and altered biogeochemical cycles. There are other five which have not been crossed, like fresh water change, atmospheric ozone depletion, atmospheric aerosol loading, ocean acidification, and no, no wet entities. But then, well, I think you need to remember well, some of these boundaries have been crossed, but not all of them. Right. Um, benefit in C integration. Well, this is actually uh, fall under the third learning outcome, but then it appears here anyway. So uh, the benefits of ESG integration, uh, there are four of them, including the reduced cost and increased efficiency, reduced risk of funds and state intervention, and it talks about the important concepts of externalities. Say if you stay negative, then that means that private costs are lower than societal costs, resulting market outcomes that may not be efficient, or the market failures. And also the concept of double materiality, so that means that uh, uh, economy, we need to consider both the climate related aspects on its own and also its own impacts on the climate. So ESG integration will reduce uh, negative externalities, uh, which we've just uh, talked about, and also to improve the ability to benefit from sustainability mega trends. And the number of challenges integrating ESG factors, like um, the perception that it may impact investment performance negatively, uh, financial duty may prevent ESG integration, uh, advisors given plus consultants and investment advisors, uh, plus, well, the, the 
parties that sell products it may not be very supportive products that integrate ESG factors for example maybe uh, they return less or, or, or maybe difficult to explain uh, lack of understanding of building investment mandate or ESG needs of its owners uh, impression that significant resource may be needed and the gap the gap between marketing commitment in different funds regarding the ESG performance Right, the sixth learning outcome explains in three ways in which investors typically reflect ESG on consideration in the investment process. So there are actually three ways like company ESG factors into investment decision making, share the engagement and proxy engagement. But then well these will be elaborated in later chapters, so you probably don't need to worry too much about these. Oh number seven. Explain the aims of key supernatural ESG initiatives and organization and the progress achieved today. This is very important because well, um, this part of the chapter has got an awful lot of examinable material. So you need to well, uh, be try to remember as much as possible. Uh, at least the, the, the key items mentioned in, in the following slides. Yeah, the first is the UN Global Compact, uh, which is um, which are set principles agreed between leading companies and the United Nations. So uh, go to the notes and read through the, the 10 principles and try to remember those. And also, United Nations Environment Program Finance Initiatives, uh, UNEPFI. This is mobilized for private sector finance for sustainable development. And under this, it's got established the principle for responsible investment PLI. Well, PLI, this will appear very often. Uh, for the remaining part of the of the material so well uh, do be very much aware of P what PRI is PRI is a UN supported international net of investors and it has got six voluntary principles incorporate ESG issues be active owners appropriate ESG disclosure promote principles enhance effectiveness report evidence of progress And this so called UNFCCC, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Well, this is very important because, well, um, there are two conventions uh, which I always talk about and then uh, has shown an awful lot of attention. Uh, because under, well, this convention, it holds the so called annual conference of the parties meetings, that's a COP, and there are two conferences. Um, uh, very important uh, expert are coming out from them. The first one, the COP3, uh, that's the Kyoto Protocol. Because well, the conference was uh, also met in Kyoto in Japan. And the Kyoto Protocol uh, was to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. And then COP21, uh, that's the Paris Agreement uh, for the conference held in Paris is to keep temperature rise this century well below 2 degrees Celsius above the industrial levels and there are 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals and probably you don't need to um, it's possible to try to remember at least some of those and or be sufficiently aware of these Sustainable Development Goals and then well, we are getting close to this chapter there are a number of reporting initiatives the Global Reporting Initiatives, uh, SSB, International Integrated Reporting Council, uh, International Purchase Council, ES Discourse Framework, and then the International Sustainability Standards Board. But then I think one, uh, the most important will be the so called TCFD. Well, this is a term that I've already been talking about. So um, it's laid down in about things that uh, businesses should disclose. Uh, regarding climate related financial disclosures, uh, including governance strategy, risk management, and managing and targets. And there are a few others like the CDP Carbon Disclosure Project and the Climate Disclosure Standards Board. Okay, I've uh, finished chapter one. So, uh, my advice on studying well, it's not just chapter one, but uh, for the rest of the material is. Well, because there are 600 pages and if you just well, go into uh, the, the main body of the test directly then 
you pretty much get 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 totally lost. So my suggestion is, is well, firstly, uh, go to the end of each chapter, read the key facts first, and then go back to the beginning of the chapter, and read the learning outcomes. Then you you can start uh, uh, reading the main body, and you may also see uh, there are a lot of case studies from time to time. Uh, I won't say they are not important, but then well, we don't have, well uh, unless you you really have a lot of time. I suggest well don't spend too much time on those case studies. Good luck. Thank you.